logat so let's first discuss uh, the word uh, deen and how to understand the word deen we are first going to go to the smartphone app al quran tafsir and by word we are first going to click on uh, the particular referred ayah as in malik e yawmuddin and uh, which is surah fatiha fatiha ayah number 4 and then we are going to click the word deen and here uh, 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 the reason why we have done that is we are looking for the root word of this particular word which is in this particular case is also the word deen which is dal ye noon then you can pick up any a uh, quranic logat in whichever language you are more comfortable with what i do is i go to this website corpus.quran.com i uh, go to uh, the quranic dictionary which is an icon on the left side when i click on the quranic dictionary it gives all the alphabets so for instance if you are looking for the word deen you are going you're going to click the word dal here and then on the left side you're going to click uh, that uh, left side and there you can see the word deen which is dal ye noon so once you click the word deen it's going to give you uh, not only the meaning of uh, this words but also gives you all the ayas that use this word and obviously in in different different meanings so what we are going to do is we are going to go on each and every aya that is mentioned in this list so for instance uh, 2 286 282 which is the aya number 282 of uh, the surah number 2 or uh, the aya number 4 of the surah number 1 which is surah fatiha and then we are going to uh, uh, go into each and every uh, aya and then we are going to pick up the Um, the quranic um, translation website so from the translation website if we go on again corpus.quran.com if we click on the english translation icon and if we click on uh, the first surah which is surah fatiha and then we click on the aya number 4 it gives you all the f- seven uh, different translations by seven uh, different scholars you can pick up whichever translation um, uh, you're comfortable with So here what I have done is I have picked out um um I have researched each and every word uh, each and every ayah as per this Quranic dictionary x um, and then I'm going to sh- uh, discuss here few of these uh, ayahs in order to give you an idea as to the same word deen being used by Quran in different different meanings so for instance in this particular ayah Quran has used the word deen in the meaning of the law as in law of the king in this word which is uh, surah fatiha ayah number 4 quran has used the word deen in the meaning of the judgment as in rewards and punishment and judgment in this ayah quran has used the same word deen as to mean a debt for which you are indebted for which you need to comply with for a specified period of time and here quran has used the word deen in the meaning of the fitrat so if we combined uh, all these four different meanings of the word deen by quran the first category of uh, the word deen used by quran and defined by quran for the word deen is in the meaning of laws rules regulations set of instructions guidelines uh basically these are the boundaries for our restrictions and our freedom secondly it is defined by a quran uh, as a debt for which you need to comply with for which you are under uh, debt for a specified period of time then it's also used in the meaning of judgment as in rewards punishment uh, payback and finally it's used in the meaning of the fitrat uh fitrat is basically that particular set of characteristics that has been given to any of the creation at the time of the creation by god which is in which is in its most pure form so for instance it is in the fitrat of the goat to eat grass it won't ever eat meat similarly it is in the fitrat of uh, the lion to eat 
meat it won't ever eat grass this is the characteristics that has been embedded in the creation at the time of the creation um, by uh, our creator it is our characteristics which are in most pure form so if we combine these four words to define the meaning of the word deen by quran deen is basically a complete code of conduct which pertains to each and every aspect of our life it's provided to us by our creator the god almighty which defines the boundaries of our freedom and our restrictions these are god given rules regulations set of instructions guidelines which we need to comply with and we are indebted for a specified period of time deen is the complete set of rules and regulations by god on the basis of which rewards and punishments will be accorded in this world as well as the next these god given rules are in accordance with our fitrat with basic aim is to bring out the very best in us through utilization of all our abilities and our faculties to its maximum so now that we have seen that how can we use the logat in order to understand the definition of the word deen let's now go into the quranic aya uh, and here we are going to again pick out few of these keywords the basic idea whenever you use logat is to let quran define the word for uh, for you so for instance here what we have done we have not relied on any definition by anyone we have gone into the uses of that word by quran we have gone into and researched on each and every aya which used the word deen uh, because god says in quran that we explain our ayas by our own ayas we so this is what we need to do as um, uh, we need to spend time we need to uh, understand what is the meaning of each and every word through its root meaning and it's been used in different different ayas what is the meaning of the of multiple meaning for that particular word so now we are going to uh, pick up one aya and the aya that we have chosen for this purpose is surah ar-rum chapter number or surah number 30 aya number 21 and in this particular aya we have selected three keywords which is ayatihi zauja and rahma so we're going to go into uh, again um, uh, the uh, smartphone app in order to identify the root words of three these words so for instance if you click on this particular sura and if you click on this particular aya if you click on each and every word so for instance if you click on ayatihi it will give you the root word of ayatihi which is alif ye ye then if you click click on zauja it will give you the root word which is zauj and if you click on rahma it will give you the root word which is rahim so next we are going to go into uh, the quranic dictionary again for instance if you are looking for the root word of ayatihi which is i alif ye ye we'll click on the alphabet alif then we'll click on alif ye ye and it will give you the complete list of all the ayas in quran which uses this root words so what we have done is we have done the same exercise the exercise that we have shown in case of the word deen for each of these three words so for instance for the first word ayatihi the root word was ayat so ayat means basically any sign that if you think and ponder on that sign you're able to realize the existence of the hidden truth hidden behind that sign for instance if you're going in a Uh, somewhere in the distance if you see some smoke coming from behind a building now you cannot see the hidden truth which is the burning of the fire at the bottom of that smoke but by looking at that smoke you're able to realize the existence of the hidden truth which is the burning of the fire at the bottom of the smoke um ayat also means to pause to stop to think to reflect and to utilize all your faculties your six senses and the faculties of thinking and pondering in fact the definition of ayat gets completed only when you think you reflect and you utilize all your faculties the smoke will remain as smoke 
it will become ayat only when when you utilize your faculty of sight and thinking and pondering so when you utilize all your faculties then and only then the definition of ayat gets completed in the next word is zawj so zawj um, um the definition of zawj means pair in fact any pair uh, whether it is alongside so for instance pair of glasses pair of shoes or opposite to each other like uh, night and day or um, darkness or light but whether it is alongside or opposite to each other the real unique characteristic of the word zawj is that one cannot exist without the other it is because of this reason that they are called as zawjan and each of these are known as the zawj of other for instance if one pair of if one glass uh, breaks down the whole pair of glasses is completely rendered useless similarly if one shoe gets uh, it's is broken the whole pair of shoes is not of any use similarly you cannot understand the concept of light without the concept of darkness or the concept of day without the concept of night and vice versa so one cannot exist without the other and it is because of this reason that they are called uh, as zawjan which is the part of same jan the same existence and one is called the zawj of the other the word uh, rahim um wherever it's used it's translated as the word mercy which is a gross injustice to the word rahim rahim has been derived from the mother's warm um uh, rahim has been derived from the word rahma which is a mother's warm during pregnancy so whatever is the mother's warm for a child is the definition of the word rahim which is in four broad categories of definition so the first and foremost it's a lifeline it's a source of survival the child breathes from the rahma the child takes all its source of nourishment from the rahma second it's a protection it's a shield it protects the child from anything that can harm the child third it's a source of long term nourishment growth and progress and development to an unprecedented unparalleled miracle like fashion so much so that a child is created from a single cell to a complete being it's a miracle like growth and progress and fourth it's a source of selfless love and sacrifice it is said that the selfless love and sacrifice that a mother has for a child is multiplied many many times in case of rahma that in order to take care of the child it extracts the required nutrition from the mother's own blood bones and body without even letting the mother know so it is the selfless love and sacrifice to that extent now let's discuss the the this particular aya we have already uh discuss the definitions of the th three words the the three words that we have explained and uh, understood from the use of the logat quranic dictionary um so if we go um into the ayah the ayah starts with that among his ayats so what we are talking about is that we are going to talk about the ayats of god almighty and we all know that the ayats of god almighty is of two broad type one is the words of quran itself that if we think and if we ponder on these words we are able to realize the existence of the hidden truth which is the wisdom and the greatness of god almighty and the other types of ayats mentioned times and times again is the many creations scattered all around us in science and universe that if we think and ponder on these creations we are able to realize the existence of the hidden truth which is the greatness and the wisdom of the creator hidden behind all of these creations so the aya start with that among his ayats is that he created for you so this is basically the second type of ayat which is the god's creation that if we think and ponder on these signs we are able to realize the existence of the greatness and the wisdom of god almighty hidden behind this creation so 
what is the ayat that he's created for you from your nafs from your soul from your core he has created for you what your zauj and what we have understood as zauj is any any pair any spouse that one cannot exist without the other so here we are talking about a husband and wife relationship it's a part of zaujan one cannot exist without the other and both have been created from the same nafs from the single nafs from your soul that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and rahim again the major significance of this word is the the definition that we have understood which is in four broad categories of definition that for husband and wife they are a lifeline they are a source of survival for each other similarly they are a protection a shield they protects each other from anything that can harm each other third they are a source of selfless love and sacrifice to that extent which rehma has for a child and fourth they are a source of unprecedented unparalleled miracle like growth and development for each other so this particular word which is a significant because of its four important meanings god has used this word for himself as rehman quality is rahim for quran because god has said that quran is rahim for those who believe and for this relationship and it is because of this fact that god has embedded this in our fitrat as a feeling of rahim for our spouse be it a husband or a wife this feeling is a part of our fitrat that god is saying that this is the only relationship which is one of the ayats of god almighty that if we think and ponder on this relationship and the fact that in this relationship and the part of our fitrat god has embedded love affection and rahim for each other we would realize the greatness and the wisdom of god almighty and not only that that if we think and if we ponder on this fact that this relationship is basically uh, why god has considered this relationship to be that important is because that if we think the whole uh, the foundation of the whole muslim umma rests on the strength of a, a strong family unit and the strength and the strength of a strong family unit rests on the shoulder of this relationship between husband and wife so basically this husband and wife relationship is at the center is at the focus of the complete muslim umma and it is because of this that god has created us from the same nafs from the same soul and has embedded the feelings of affection and love and rahim for each other the only thing that we need to do is to realize the existence of these feelings in ourselves you as husband and wife can move mountains if you understand and realize these feelings even as a muslim umma you can completely transform and you can move mountains you can do something which is impossible and there there are many many examples that i can uh, that if we look all around us we can see this one of the example that comes to my mind uh, is very very recent you've all heard about stephen hawking um, one of the most uh, genius uh, of all times who died recently just a couple of years back he was the um, uh, he was the sound uh, he was the sa- scientist a genius um, um, so when he was doing a phd um, uh, it was at that point of time that he was died diagnosed with motor neuron diseases disease which was uncurable and he was given only 2 years to survive because doctors believed at that point of time uh, that he would not be able to survive after 2 years and we are talking about 1963 that people that doctors at that point of time had diagnosed him with this disease and had told him that he would not be able to survive beyond 2 years because each and every part of his muscle uh, of his body would die down and it was basically the rahim and the uh, um, uh, 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 the rahim from his wife um, uh, who 
who was there with him who gave him support and strength and uh, actually made this a sort of a miracle like uh, not only um, that he was able to survive all these years he he uh, uh, in spite of the fact that he none of his uh, muscles in his body was able to uh, able to uh, work he could not speak he could not walk he could not do anything but he contributed so much uh, to the history of the mankind because of his mind uh, and because of the fact that he was able to survive all these years um, and he died only uh, um, in 2018 so this was this rahim which was extended to him uh, by his wife and this was this rahim which is a part of our fitrat as um, mankind um, so um basically today uh, uh, we have realized how um, to use lughat how to uh, use quranic dictionary and the tools that we have used we have used one of the website we have used one of the smartphone apps in order to identify the root word then we have picked out the lughat uh, for the quranic uh, um, uh, dictionary um, uh, from the website and then we have utilized all these tools and what we have done is we have not relied on any definition by anyone else what we had done is we have gone to each and every ayah that's mentioned in that website for the use of that root word and then we had spent time uh, because this is something that you cannot rush this is our responsibility as muslims to invest time if we want to understand quranic words we have to refer to all the ayahs where these this word has been used and then come back to and aya in terms of which of these or which combination of these words are being used in this aya and again we need to think we need to ponder we need to utilize all our faculties in order to understand quranic words and quranic ayas so today we have uh, discussed the definition of the word deen so deen has been defined by quran as those set of guidelines that uh, instructions god given rules and regulations which defines the boundaries of our freedom and our restrictions these are those god given rules and regulations for which we need to comply with for which we are indebted for a specified period of time these god given rules and regulations are in accordance with our fitrat and their basic aim is to utilize all our faculties to its maximum based on these god given rules and regulations our rewards and our punishments is accorded in this world as well as in the next we have also discussed the aya 30 uh, 21 and in that particular aya we have taken out three key words zawj ayat and rahim and we have picked out the meaning of these and we have tried to understand the meaning of this word from uh, um, these words from quran um, and at the end we managed to understand the complete aya which was uh, um, which actually told us that uh, husband and wife relationship is the only relationship which is one of the ayat of god almighty that if we think and if we ponder on this relationship we are able to realize the existence of the wisdom and the greatness of the creator hidden behind this creation and the reason is that god has embedded the feelings of affection and love and rahim Uh, in our fitrat for our spouse be it husband and wife and the rahim is not the uh, uh, not the meaning as mercy but it is the meaning as rahima which is a mother's warm during pregnancy so the husband and wife are have rahim for each other which is in four categories of definition it is a lifeline it is a source of survival it is a protection it's a shield for each other it is a source of selfless love and sacrifice for each other and it is a source of unprecedented unparalleled miracle like growth and development for each other